Yo, what is up guys? It is Small back again with another Epic 7 Shuju Pool video for you guys today. And today we're going to be talking about the banners of Bihu and Arya who just started running after the maintenance, and if they're worth pulling for. We're also going to be talking about their artifacts, Sphere of Inferno, and Scroll of Shadows, and if you guys should be buying that with your Powder of Knowledge from the shop, or if you guys should refrain so. Now keep in mind, Bihu is a new unit, that means his banner will be running for two weeks. Also, this means that there's not a, not a lot of data or information on how good he is. Uh, there's a lot of like theory crafting and first impressions. So if you guys do decide to pull for him or uh, you guys want to wait it out and wait for other people to test him out, that is a good idea uh, because not a lot of info out on him yet. Like I said, he's out for two weeks, so there's a lot of time before his banner goes away. So you can actually just wait and see what people think about him. Arya, on the other hand, not a new unit, so she's only out for seven days. There's a lot of info on her, though, because she's been out for a while, so we can talk about her uh, a little bit more uh, explicitly. So that being said, let's start with Bihu here. Now, if you guys don't know what Bihu's skills do, let's actually talk about it really quickly because he's a new unit. So as S3, guys, it is a non-attack skill. It is going to dispel two buffs from all enemies and make them unbuffable for two turns before he CR pushes himself by 50% and all of his other allies by 20%. So the animation on this looks pretty sick. Just from the animation, I'm kind of very enticed to pull for him. He's pretty husbando after all. He is a fox boy. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty good if you can go first with him, obviously, because he can strip two buffs. Put him buffable similar to Basar, and also CR push your team as well as yourself. Next, you can see his S2, guys. It is a passive. He'll get passive attack and defense. When attacking, though, he cannot trigger a critical hit, but he'll increase burn damage suffered by enemies by 30%. This is not just from him, guys. This is going to be from all of your allies' burn. So, you know, Researcher Carrot, a Pirate Flan, ML Araminta, regular Araminta. They will all benefit from this. It works very similar to Bellion's passive, where if he's on the field alive, this will be applied to the enemy. If he dies, then the enemies will not be benefit or you know getting be getting this uh, debuff effect where they're taking more burn damage. Next, we have his S1, Scorching Flare. So this is going to be a single target attack that burns for one turn, 100% chance. And when you're using it on his own turn, you actually have a chance to use a different attack. This upgraded attack is called Incinerate. It will attack the enemy with Explosion of Flames, as you can see, and also burn for one turn. But the thing is, this will also detonate the burn effects inflicted on the end of the turn. Not only your own burn effects, but other burn effects that are applied from your teammates as well. So if you look at this, this is the S1 animation. If you incinerate, it looks pretty cool. It's just like a spirit bomb if you uh, if you know you know uh, i guess the s1 is pretty similar as well um oh but that was the upgraded one so let's see if we can get the normal one yeah that's the normal one looks pretty weird but this is the upgraded one a lot more cooler so his skills look pretty good just looking at his kit really quick i think he'll be pretty good in burn comps i don't think he'll be like super broken or op or anything but he seems very niche and a fun way to play the game with because you can just make burn comps around him all in all from a first impression you know i don't think he's like too strong you know i think he's just like a more for fun unit until more burn units come out because like i said in world arena which is the end game pvp content uh, you're not gonna be able to use him because of the fact that you kind of need to build a team around him now i think if you can actually build him fast enough where he can actually get his s3 off he's pretty decent the thing is his base speed is too low to contest with other uh speed contesters so the chance of that's pretty low once you get to the higher ranks uh, but his s3 is definitely definitely very powerful even if you don't have burn units on your team if you can go first for arena offense and guild wars offense he's pretty usable there just pair him with some burn units and have him go against slower teams um but yeah for the most part seems pretty strong for with burn units but overall as a unit i think he's more of a fun unit more than a very very powerful unit now talking about his artifact real quick sphere of inferno it's going to be for rangers after using a non-attack skill you'll increase your cr by a certain amount and after your next attack you'll burn the target so this is going to be very very good on units like bihu obviously because you can s3 and then you proc it and you'll be able to get extra cr and then your s1 if you actually soul burn this will burn twice uh, so you can actually you know, detonate two burns in one shot unit that way pretty cool probably will be one of his best artifacts otherwise you can use guiding light on him and see pretty decent results as well overall if you're newer to the game definitely not worth pulling for even though his animations look cool from a gameplay standpoint because of the fact that only really going to be used in pvp uh, pve units really need to be able to crit to make use of daydream joker which is the best artifact for pvp for pve overall um, but if you're into the late game and you want to make a fun team comp around him and you have all the pieces like araminta ml araminta ml flan and stuff like that and want to make a burn team go for it but i think this unit is easy skip uh, nothing too special in my opinion maybe i'm wrong though maybe he'll be super broken i'll look like an idiot but for now i think he's not worth pulling for um 
unless you just want to have fun and have a lot of bookmarks left over. Next, we're going to talk about Arya. So Arya, guys, pretty cool unit, uh, pretty fun to use. So looking at her skills real quick, you'll see her S3 is a non-attack skill. It is going to increase her defense uh, with a defense buff and also give her a counter-attacking buff for two turns. She'll also give herself, um, or not herself, but her ally stealth and a barrier for uh, two turns. So basically, she's getting defense and counter-attacking buff, and everyone else gets stealth and barrier, making it so that... Um, you know, your team can't get targeted, and even if they do get hit by AoE, what will happen is that you'll actually um, have that barrier to prevent them from getting knocked out, and they're forced to attack into Arya. Now, because of this, you don't want this buff to get stripped so that she can keep counterattacking, be tanky. You're going to most likely build her on a high effect resist build. Um, this is just pretty cool. You can see that it's just, you know, defense, counterattack buff, and makes it so that the enemy has to hit you as long as they can't strip it. And you're going to see this is her S2 animation, which we'll look at really quick, but this looks amazing. It's just like a Kamehameha kind of thing. But you're going to see she uses a focus system that gave her three focus. When you reach five focus, guys, you're going to actually use your S2 attack. So her S2 also has a passive built in. You get increased crit chance, makes it so that you can build her on effect resist and still be able to re reach her stat requirements easily. You're going to see when you actually use a skill after your focus is full. So you can see if you S3 and then and uh, you S3 again somehow. Uh, basically, the turn you get five focus, um, you're gonna actually activate your S2 attack. So your S2 attack is an AoE attack, dispels two buffs, and we'll see our pushback, and it does a lot of damage. It scales with your defense, so that defense buff is very, very nice on you if you have it up when you use it. And also keep in mind, mages have very high base defense, and with that defense buff, you're getting even more. If you build her on a defense heavy build, she hits very, very hard. She's a defense scaling mage, as you're gonna see. Her S1 is a single, not a single target, but two target attack, which we have a chance to decrease hit chance. And when it's not your turn, so when you're counter attacking basically, or if you're dual attacking, you'll have an increased chance to land that decrease hit chance. And this damage also scales with your defense. Looks pretty, pretty clean. Um, you can still burn this for an extra turn. So a common combo here would be like uh, to S3 and then soul burn. Um, your S1 and then use it twice and you can activate your S2 actually right away. So, you know, this, this is her S1 animation. This is her S2 again. Let's show you guys, you know, the way you use her um, in a typical battle, right? So you usually take a turn with her after your team goes first or whatever, right? You S3. And then since she's a mage, you can put her on target hells, although most people don't put her on target hells for the most part. But if you do have target hells, you can actually soul burn this. On your second turn, it's still your second turn because you soul burn. Then you S1 again, and then you'll see that you S2 after and do a lot of damage, strip buffs. CR pushback, and you most likely win at this point. Pretty cool unit. Uh, her skills look amazing. Uh, just from her skills, it's a very, very good reason to pull for her. Also, her, her design is uh, very nice, if you know what I mean. All in all, though, Arya, not really used in PvE, right? So her kit is mostly going to be for PvP. Some people do use her in PvE in like, some areas of content, but for the most part, I don't really like her there. I think she's more suited for PvP. She's just really hard to build for PvP. You need defense, you need crit chance, uh, which is kind of alleviated from her S2, uh, but you also need crit damage. You also need HP so you don't die fast enough. You need speed so you're fast enough, right? There's a lot of things you need going for yourself. Um, so for that reason, she is very hard to build, but if you do have her built very well, she's very, very good for PvP. Not like OP broken, but definitely has her place in the meta. You can use her against teams that have low damage or don't have a lot of ways to deal AOE or just, you know, can't really deal with her S1 debuffs and she's very, very powerful. Keep in mind, there's a lot of counters out there, right? You can use like Alencia against her. It's very, very strong. Even like Senya is very good. Anything with AOE strips because the teammates, although they do get barrier and stealth, they can get that stripped off and then they can just ignore Arya. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, anything with AOE strips, you have to be careful about. For the most part, I think she's an easy skip though if you're new to the game. If you're in the late game though and you are looking for a decent bruiser type unit for World Arena, she's very, very good. Definitely recommend pulling for it if you have a uh, full built out roster already and you want to expand it to more niche units. Otherwise, if you're low on bookmarks, you can skip. I think both of these banners, uh, you can definitely skip them and no one will say anything because of the fact that they're nothing like too broken and they're probably going to be some good banners coming out in the future. Now for Scroll of Shadows, guys, let's talk about our artifact. You're going to see that this artifact is going to be a mage exclusive. It is going to be when the caster attacks when it's not their turn, you do increased damage. And after attacking, you have a 50% chance to decrease defense, decrease speed, silence or put on buffable, all very good debuffs. So most of the time, you're going to use this on Arya because of the fact that she's built in counter. But a lot of people like to run her on Ayla Violin or even uh, Fairy Tale to Nebria's artifact, the one that also does the same thing as Ayla Violin. Uh, so for the most part, this is not really a must buy because you can use either Fairy Tale to Nebria's artifact. And if you don't have that, you can use Ayla Violin, which strips which is, in my opinion, a bit better. Uh, so for that reason, I think this is not worth purchasing right now. Uh, but if you do want to use this on her, it's not that bad. I just think there's a better free-to-play option from the Hollow Child Shop in a four-star artifact.
So that being said, that pretty much sums up this video, guys. You can skip basically everything. Uh, there are probably going to be good banners coming from the future. We might have a rerun with a collab or something. Uh, but like I said, both are PvP-centric units. Um, I think Bihu is going to be more for, for fun users uh, if you're looking for a good burn team or a fun burn team to use. If you do decide to pull him, though, this artifact is very, very good on him. You might want to buy it. For Arya, very good in late-game RTA. Not really like super broken, but a good niche meta pick to have. And her artifact, I would definitely recommend skipping on. That being said, I hope you found this video helpful, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.